In the next example, we are going to analyze a problem with, um, with concrete, a concrete uh, corbel. In the same way I saw, uh, we saw in the first example, uh, uh, in some cases, codes and standards allow to solve linear elastic models, check by code, uh, and have, where you have some limits, and see if your model, if your, if your structure is over or under that limit. But uh, in concrete, you can also uh, try to follow those steps, but only where uh, some assumptions are fulfilled. That is, uh, the behavior should be similar to a column or to a, uh, to a wall, where one, there is one main direction or two main directions, uh, much more bigger than the other, and the, the, the format, uh, the, the, the sections, the, uh, the cross sections, the formation are plain after loading. There are many regions in, in concrete models that this is not fulfilled. Those regions are called digit regions, but depends on codes and standards, they can be called in different ways. Uh, there are some sort of blocks, concrete blocks, where uh, uh, those codes and uh, where, well, that uh, behavior cannot be uh, applied. There are other methods to, to yeah, decide they this. Are not, yeah, they, they are not under the specifications of the, of the typical code, uh, code or standards and uh, no linear behavior can be applied to these models. So well, you can try to make a strat anti model with force equilibriums to design your model, or also you can use a non-linear reinforced concrete uh, finite element analysis with real concrete behavior, cracking, crossing, real uh, non-linear behavior of reinforced bars, apply some loads, uh, make a real simulation of your model, obtain the ultimate loads, and where cracking are happenings and so on. If we go to the model, I'm going to open salt. I've sold two different models. This first model is unreinforced. The the reinforcement I have are this one. Well, I've just done a 2D model for us to be for to be easier to see results. But well, this should be solved in a 3D model. Can be solved in a 3D model. For the material, I selected a concrete, and in the in the analysis behavior, here I said nonlinear isotropic hardening, and I've set crack data. Here the crack data, I add a value for cracking. This is the maximum stress for cracking, shear retention, and softening modulus. Here in my plot, this, the, the softening modulus is this slope, and this is the allowable uh, tension stress. The same for compression, I can define a maximum strain in my model. In my case, the maximum strain is 0.35% with this concrete data. And also for steel, I can solve with a nonlinear bilinear behavior to check if yielding, yielding happens or not. I solve the model. In my model, I didn't reinforce this, uh, this, this part of the model. So when I apply here loads, cracking uh, is likely to occur and collapse of the structure. If I see the loads I have, here you can see I have vertical loads in these points, and I also have some horizontal loads, which are a bit smaller applied in the same points. Solve the model with those loads. I can see here in the results, the model has finished solving with the 93% of the load. Well, it's very good, but uh, it will uh, fail you, it will collapse. And le let's see which results I'm having. In example, let's see cracking. X component of cracking in this direction. Cracking okay. strain. Cracking strain. So I can see here the value of cracking strain. I have two big cracks here and a second crack in, this, in these points where load is applied. I can see also if I have 
uh, crashing problems Com uh, if the concrete is breaking due to compression. The way to analyze the results is plotting equivalent plastic strain. I can see I have some crashing problems where the loads are applied in these points. So I can see uh, here, if I plot again this part, I have in that points failure due to this. I fritz this point and also cracking in this point, similar to what I have here, cracking to cracking lines and and crashing. So well, I can add some reinforcement until my model converts for all the loads and I have allowable strains uh, and also a uh, cracking width. The next model is this other one where I've added some reinforcement. Here in my model, I've solved the model and uh, uh, could solve the whole solution. I could include, in, increase the, la, the, the load to analyze uh, the ultimate load. But well, just analyzing the load I will have. In example, I can plot for misses um, for misses equivalent stress to see stress in my bars. If these results are plotted in other units, in capascals, I can see it is that the value is 180, which is far away from the yielding limit. So I can see my reinforcement is okay, and uh, well, this, this configuration is okay for this model. I can see I don't have a big stress in my but and well, I could modify the configuration taking into account the stresses I'm getting in the model. Well, uh, other important uh, tool of civil film is insert. Here you can see the mess. If I clear the result, the mess doesn't match between concrete mess and steel mess, but civil film has an option in these cases where I can use this insertion. This insertion, what it does, I'm going to so how to generate an insertion. I should click, after clicking here, insertion, I'm going to make an insertion in the concrete of this rebar. The host. Here you can see the host is solid 2D, that is concrete, and the bar. So just clicking here, I will generate an insertion. It means both uh, structural elements the bar and the concrete will work together as if they are sailing nodes. But this is not happening. This is not needed. You don't need to generate models that share the nodes. You can insert any type of, in example, tendons inside concrete, rebars, wherever, and just making the insertion of one inside the other, they will work together as if they are sailing nodes. So this is very useful and very fast to generate models and to avoid uh, meshing problems.